At the west end of the layout, the track disappears into the back scene under a girder road bridge as described in a previous video. The east end is different as there will be a hill at that end so a tunnel mouth was required. The only problem was the very sharp radius curves where it will be situated. Long coaches have a considerable overhang in the middle whilst long locomotives may have a considerable overhang at the ends therefore the tunnel mouth would need to be very wide to accommodate both of these situations. Unfortunately no proprietary offerings seemed to be wide enough so scratch building or kit bashing was going to be necessary. For something different I thought I would like a twin bore tunnel if I could build one to fit the space. Because space was tight both alongside and between the tracks I first of all made a card template mock-up to see if the idea would work. The template shape was carefully checked against my longest models and as can be seen by the many pencil measurements was adjusted several times. It just about worked with clearances of a couple of millimetres at the critical points so construction commenced. The basis for the build is the Wills Brick Arches Kit SS52 of which I had two spare arches from a previous build. The arches as supplied in the kit were too wide and the gap I had between the up and down tracks was too narrow for a full width brick support so some modifications were required. But then that's what kit bashing is all about. Each arch was therefore carefully cut into two down the middle and some small pieces removed. One right hand brick support and one left hand brick support were also reduced in width to fit the site. The picture shows the basic arches having been cut out and then glued together. The main join will be hidden later and the cuts in the arch tops disguised when painted. The white plastic rectangles glued to the bases of the bridge are to enable the middle bridge pier to clear the ballast at this point. To keep the whole thing straight and flat and to add strength to the structure a reinforcing piece of white plastic was cut out and glued to the rear of the kit pieces. Uprights were also added to the rear so that the whole structure could stand up on its own. This picture shows the various pieces used from the wheels kit ready for assembly. And this picture shows the parts assembled but without the capping strips and capstones. These have been left off and will be attached once they have been painted. The partly completed tunnel mouth has now been painted in my preferred brick colour to match the other brick structures on the layout. And this shot shows the tunnel mouth after the mortar courses have been added. The whole structure now looks a little too light so the next stage is to bring back some of the original colour. The bricks have now been dry brushed with my preferred brick colour to bring back some colour to their surfaces and remove the overall whitish look which remained after adding the mortar courses. Further details on my painting technique can be found on my video covering the building of six brick arches for the western end of the layout. The tunnel mouth is now more or less complete. A downpipe has been added in the middle which not only looks good but also disguises the join between the two original arches. Thinned white paint has been gently applied to represent water staining and dark greyish paint added over the centre of the arches to simulate where steam and or diesel exhausts would accumulate. 
The left-hand arch is darker than the right, as that is the direction that most trains would normally travel. Thinned dark green paint was added to represent staining where water may have run down and accumulated in damp conditions such as would be found on a tunnel mouth situated in a cutting. This was also added along the base of the bridge. Foliage and scatter will be added once the tunnel mouth is installed on the layout. But first, I need to build the hill. That's all for now. See you next time.